Hey everyone, Mariah here, and welcome to episode one, chapter one, volume one, season one, whatever I'm going to call it, of the Eyes Boxer Workshop video series. What this is all about here is I am from time to time at no set schedule that is in the foreseeable future. I am going to take questions, I guess, issues, problems that the community runs into, things that people get helped with on the Discord, on the Iceboxer Discord, the Iceboxer Forums, or even dual-boxing.com. I'm going to take these topics, topics that I find interesting or worthwhile, and I'm going to do a quick video on them, as, qu as quick as it can be. It's not going to be like ultra-fast lightning round quick, but it's going to be quick enough. It's going to be just something where I show and I, I, I put this out there, right? Whether I configure something from absolute scratch, from zero to hero, or whether I kind of start in the middle, that's going to depend from that's going to depend on how I approach that from topic to topic. So in this one here today, this one we're going to be kind of starting. I'm going to be kind of moving quickly through some of this um, because there's some copying and pasting. And well, I think you guys can handle the copying and pasting. I'm just gonna. I trust you guys, okay? I trust you guys are able to handle some copying and pasting. So what we're working with here, right? So I'm just going to kind of, I'm not always going to do this, but recently I was talking to Beek, B-E-E-Q, cute little Finnish gnome mage in the Ice Boxer Discord. And he was, uh, he's now running 16 characters in his character set. And he bought a second, G, uh, a second GPU and he wants to split eight characters onto one GPU and eight characters onto the other GPU to help relieve the load on a single GPU. This seems to be kind of coming up a lot recently here. And so there's not really anything about this on how to go about creating a window layout for this. Now, this isn't about splitting the load by any means. Maybe that's a topic for another one of these. Maybe that's a topic for a completely separate custom video all on its own. I don't know, but it, it's not really in a high demand thing. So we'll see where that goes, right? But right now we're worried about creating a layout that looks like this, something like this with two swap groups and on two different, uh, two different um, displays, two different monitors. Now, the thing that stuck out about this particular example is that he is using, he was, well, I guess he still is, using one 4K display, a big 4K display at 3840 by 2160, which is a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Uh, sorry, I hit the bottom of my desk there. And the other display was a 1920 by 1200, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. This creates some issues that need to be resolved. And so I thought I would tackle that here in this particular video. Now, this is mostly a working layout of what we want. There's one final step that we need to do to this. Remind me at the end, don't let me forget. How do we get to this though, right? How do we get to this? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to suggest something here. I'm going to recommend that you follow my suggestion, and that is don't try to create a window layout from scratch. It is nothing short of a third degree migraine, whatever that really means. It's just a giant headache. I've been helping some people recently who've tried to tackle creating a window layout all on their own from scratch, just right-clicking on here, going new window layout, and you know, this should be easy but it isn't. There's a lot of settings that the wizard sets up behind the scenes that people don't really understand. So don't try to do this, please. What we're going to do is we're going to take this 16 man character set, 16 slot character set. We're going to use the wizard. We're going to use the wizard. So the window layout wizard, we're just going to do this, right? So we've got our two displays. This is where the magic of swap groups comes into play. So we've got swap groups. When you click on this, let's move this over. We click on this, you can either click the little three dots here and you'll get this additional screen that pops up or you can just expand this, right? And you'll see this here. Display one has a one next to it. Display two has a 15 next to it. I don't know what constitutes what gets assigned here by default. I have no idea. So anyway, what we want is eight and eight, right? This is how many characters in your care and how many slots in your character set are going to be divided between each, each particular display here. So we're going to go eight and we're going to go eight. We're going to hit enter. And then we're gonna come down. There's a few layouts that are already existing that I have to move beyond here. So what we want is we want something that looks like this. This is a great starting point. Now, my layouts looked, do we even have that option here? 
right? So my layouts look like this, right? These are the two that I'm going to be showing how to, I'm going to show how to create this. I'm going to show why this one isn't good, but these are already existing. So the wizard doesn't give you that option, right? So these are corner layouts is, is what I would call it. It's a corner layout. And the wizard doesn't give that when you start playing with swap groups in this way. It's going to give you something that looks like this, which isn't what we want, right? What we want is to be split across both of the displays. So this is our starting point. So we just go to next and we name this starting point template. So here we come in here. We can see now we've got two colors of regions. You click on any region, you can see the swap group over here. It says swap group one. You click on the red region, it says swap group two. If we go to the swap groups tab, we can see that swap group one at the top has all of this assigned already. These are things that happen behind the scenes. If we click on, if we're going to move to swap group two, we can see that we've got some new values that are assigned here that have to do with this. And if we look at the general settings, we already have these two things set up as well. These are things that get overlooked when you start trying to create this from scratch. <laughs> as Beak will tell you, as Beak will tell you. So this is our starting point, right? But now we need to get to these corner layouts. We need to get to this. How do we get to that? Well, we need to make some more templates to base this off of, right? So we want eight per monitor. So if we want to just kind of whip up an eight man layout, we're going to need to make a copy of our character set. Doesn't matter what you call it. And then delete half of the, half of the slots. And let's see if I overshot that. Bam, right on the mark, baby. So now we've got an eight slot character set and we can right click on this and we can go to window layout wizard. And now, we're just going to kind of come down here until we see something we like. I swear it's in here. There it is. So this is up to you whether you want to avoid the taskbar or not. In this particular setup, I'm not avoiding the taskbar. So this is what we would want to create, right? Now, I've already created this as a, as a test layout, and that's my eight left over here. I've already created this. So this is the setup we would want on the left monitor. And we can take these values, you click on any region, and you can see the size over here. So you look at this, 1440 by 810. If we come back to our working one, I've already done the copying and pasting, right? So we're still using 1440 by 810. But you would take this, copy it, come over to the template, and just make this change, right? Just put that in and, and then come back to here to the eight left and take these small regions copy their size, and then just come down the list. We do this, paste it in, next region, paste it in, next region, paste it in. So I guess I will show this, how to do this nice and quickly. I'm doing a triple click. There's a triple click in the size. A double click does not get you there. Now that I've, okay, there. So those are our regions. We just drag them up and we match them where they need to be. Okay, it will anchor, you don't, and then there you go. So there's, there's how we get to that point, right? Now we wanna create another, we wanna work on the other display because it's a different size. So we wanna come back into the window layout wizard. We want to actually set this to false. We don't want to avoid the taskbar because we didn't avoid it the first time. So we're gonna come back down here and we're going to find a layout that suits our needs. So this one looks good, right? You think, oh, this is, this is it. This is the, the other display. This is what it needs to look like because it looks like the first display. So, okay, so I've got this already created as well. This is actually right bad. So if we look at the regions, here we go. And here's the final product of that, right? Here's the final product of that. What the problem here is, is something that I talked about right in the beginning. We have a 16 by nine display and a 16 by 10 display. If you make these regions this way, if, if, you, if they take up all of the space on the 16 by 10, you're going to have bad aspect ratios and your repeater, when you turn on mouse broadcasting, is probably not going to line up properly. Unless you make some changes to your repeater profile, you can actually use this and you can come into your repeater profile. You can change the cursor positioning mode from from center or two from center. I don't really like that. I don't like a scaled cursor positioning mode. I like it to just be default. So we need to fix that because if we look at this, look at this region, 1440 by 810. Now the smaller region over here, region nine, needs to be some kind, some, um, 
some factor of that. It needs to be able to divide into the de- it needs to be able to divide into this number, this size very nicely. So region nine is 720 by 450. So the 720 times two is 1440. That divides in nicely. But the 450 times two is 900. We're working with 810. It's going to be off vertically. That's going to mess up our cursor. So how do we fix this, right? Because then we need to create something that looks like this. How do we fix this? Well, this is where you're going to need to do some math. In this particular example, if we look at uh, 8 left, we're going to want half of this. So we're going to want 720 by uh, 405. That is what we're going to want on the second display. So we come back into the character set, our 8 man character set, uh, window layout wizard. And here we can go main window size and we can set, you can either set it up here or you can set it right here. Let me move this over a little bit. What did I say? 720, I don't even know, by 405. That's what we want. So now with the main window size set that way, we can come back down here. We can set a void taskbar to false because again, my original setup is not of um, is not avoiding the taskbar. Come down here and we're going to find the same layout we did before, just like that, right there. That's what we want. This main window size, is 720 by 405 and all of the surrounding windows match that aspect ratio, which of course then matches the, all of the aspect ratios on the other display as well. So when we turn on broadcasting, we turn on mouse repeater, it's all going to match up. So I don't need to hit next because I've already got this over here. I've got eight right, correct. This is what we want, right? So we would take these values again, 720 by 405 and 240 by 135, and we would put it into, we would paste it in to this We'd come down to our template, right? And we would paste those values into these. And then we would end up with this. It would look like this, right? Now, if you're paying attention to these numbers, it's very easy to just kind of do this based on these two size displays, but it may not always be this easy. So obviously 720 by 405, multiply both of those by two, and we've got 1440 by 810. And the same goes for the small regions, 240 by 135, multiply those by two, we've got 480 by 270, guess what? This is 480 by 270. So, I mean, if you knew that ahead of time, you could kind of just kind of whip that up. It may not always come out that nice depending on how custom your window layout is going to be. So with these values, this looks good. This looks good right here, but there is an additional step. Thank you for reminding me. There is an additional step here. Because we are splitting the load across two displays, looking at the swap groups tab, we have the reset region. This is a very important region when we're working with this stuff. The reset region, it says here, this will typically force the game to render at the size of the reset region when we set a region here. So the reset region of swap group one, which is the white bordered swap group is region one. So region one dictates the size that two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight are going to render at. We look at swap group two, region nine is going to dictate that size as well but region nine is much smaller than region one. This is going to cause two different rendering resolutions across your GPUs, which once again may throw off your UI size and ultimately screw up mouse broadcasting. So we can fix this. We can fix this. We need to make, we need to duplicate this region right here. We need to make a 17. We need to put it into the proper swap group, swap group two. Now it's red, just like the rest of them. And we need to come over here, swap group two. We're gonna set the reset region to be 17. And ultimately what we want, I'm, this is where I'm not entirely sure, but I think we want to pull this over to the other display, at least the area where the other display is. And if you notice, you can't really pull it over there yourself. So it, you're gonna have to type in this value, whatever size you're working with and just kind of move it over there. Now, if you try to touch it at this point, it's gonna anchor back and it's gonna snap to its position. So if you've got it in position, don't touch it, right? So what this is going to do is this is going to cause regions nine through 16 to render at the size of 17, which is 1440 by 810, which matches region one over here, which is 1440 by 810. And of course dictates uh, once again, the rendering size of two through eight. So now everything is gonna render at the exact same size. The one issue you might run into here is that regions nine through 16 on the smaller display are going to kind of look a little weird because they're rendering at a higher resolution and they're really being scaled down now. 
So things might look a little weird on there. Obviously, when we look at the displays like themselves, they, um, uh, I don't really, well, the displays here just in the regions editor, like the 1920 by 1080 display on the right is very small and the, the 4K 1 to 3840 by 2160 is very large. Obviously, that could be a 28-inch display on the left and a 24-inch display on the right. So it's not really that much of a disparity when you're looking at them physical size-wise. So you're going to notice it is what I'm getting at. You're going to notice that this rendering of these other regions are going to be somewhat noticeable. But it's just a side effect. The other thing, Beak, again, the person who more or less triggered this video, what he does is he renders one at the size of nine. Now, this is his personal preference. I don't really like to do this, but this is his personal preference. So instead of, uh, instead of putting this in the swap group one, we would come over here or we'd set this to swap group. Uh, instead of having 17 in swap group two, we would put it back in, in swap group one and we would copy the size from here instead. And now we'd have to come over to the swap groups tab once again, set the reset region to 17 in swap group one, and in swap group two, set it back to nine. This would mean that everything on the larger display is now going to render at a smaller resolution and then be scaled up. So it's gonna look pixelated, but it's going to produce less load on your GPU. And this is the way Beak did it, but I don't like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change this back. We're gonna just set this back here. Do, do, do. And then I'll launch this and we'll see what this looks like, right? Um, copy this size. Swap group two. 1920, and now it's over there. Okay, great. So I'm going to export this. Successfully exported. And then the size of the screen is going to change a little bit. This is just a demonstration, so it's not like I'm using two GPUs. I have this on just one GPU here. It's just one large screen. We're going to see how this works. I've uh, put an outline around the regions that belong to Swap Group 1, and then a different colored outline around the regions that belong to Swap Group 2. And we'll see how the, all this loads up here in a moment. I'm just using DX Nothing Windows. It takes a lot less time to, to launch them and just use this as a demonstration. So rather than have to launch 16 game clients, I'm just launching 16 DX Nothing Windows. Okay, so there we have it. Eight regions on the left, eight regions on the right. We're gonna pretend this is two different displays. Of course, again, in the physical world, could be very similarly sized displays, but it's just the way that it's laid out in ice boxer like this. And of course, two through eight are only going to swap. All these numbers are just, it's just a custom click bar I threw up there just for identification purposes. All of these are going to swap with only those on the left hand side, which is going to be GPU one. And all of these are going to swap on the right hand side, which is going to be assigned to GPU two. And that's fantastic. Working well, working is expected. And that's it. That's how you do this. So um, I guess check the description for this particular profile if you want to look at it. Otherwise, watch this video three more times and then come to the Iceboxer Discord or the Iceboxer Forum or Dual Dash Boxing or somewhere and ask for help if you need help with this. But this is how you split. This is how you use multiple swap groups on two differently sized displays with different aspect ratios. And you end up with this. So that's it. Thank you for watching. My name is Mirai, and I will see you all in the next video.